So if you have a turbocharged engine, there's five things that you should never, ever under any circumstances do to your engine because it's going to cause long term damage and maybe even premature engine failure. So let's now look at the five things you should never ever do to a turbocharged engine. So please subscribe and please throw us up a like because that really helps us to get out there. So the first of these is skimping on servicing. Those oil changes are absolutely vital to ensure longevity of the engine. Turbo engines are generally working much harder than a naturally aspirated counterpart. They work under higher pressures. The oil is going through the turbo, which is a very hot component, so it degrades quite quickly. And it's not just the servicing that we need to think about as well. We need to think about the quality of fuel that we put into the engine. Turbocharged engines are actually quite efficient and they generally speaking really benefit from higher octane premium fuels. With lower quality fuels in it, in most areas, you'll suffer from pinking or pre-ignition or detonation. And they're all problems that can actually affect the longevity of the engine and they can wreck your fuel economy. So read your manufacturer's hand if they specify a specific grade of fuel, make sure that you match or exceed it. Don't cheap out and buy lower quality fuel because in the long run you're going to pay. So the second area is thinking about the way we actually drive the turbo car. So when you're coming out of a corner, do we have a tendency to just floor it? Now sudden throttle changes, either full on or full off, are not great for the lifespan of your turbo and all the ancillary components. If you had a little bit of mechanical sympathetic knowledge, it would address the way that we actually drive our cars. And a progressive approach to the throttle either on or off is really beneficial. Those sudden changes that we make on the throttle can adversely affect what's going on inside the intake, inside the engine and the turbocharger. And we can lead to situations where we're over boosting or we're stressing components within the turbo system that are designed to deal with those excessive extremes of pressure. So the notable areas would be the dump valve or the recirculation valve and the turbo's wastegate control. So being progressive can actually prolong the lifespan of your car. I know we all want to just jump in and really enjoy the car and boot it. And the other thing when you're coming out of a corner is turbos don't deliver the power in a very smooth linear way. In most cases, a few are quite well set up and designed, but generally a lot of turbos will reach a point in the RPM range and then they'll kick in and you'll get a surge of power. And that surge of power can cause your grip and traction to slip at crucial points in your cornering and really upset the handling and the stability of the car. So once again, it's another argument for being progressive with your throttle control, remaining in control of the car at all times. It's quite different to what we see in the movies, the way they drive in the movies. And even on track days, you should really try and be progressive with the throttle and allow the power to build, flow and ebb as it suits the conditions that you're driving in and the corners as you approach them and lead out of them. So another big area that you need to think about with turbocharged engines is the oil must be given time to warm up. We've often said not to jump into a cold engine and just floor it and drive it really hard because that really damages all of the components within the engine. Everything is designed to contract and expand with heat. And it's not until everything is warmed up that the pistons and the piston rings and the cylinders and everything are all in good, align are all in good alignment and good condition and can actually handle the power. If you start booting the throttle too early, it can cause all sorts of pressures and problems within the engine. Now with a turbocharger, it's even more critical because the turbo is spinning at 200, 300,000 RPM in some cases. So you've got something inside the turbo that requires a lot of lubrication. And if the oil is cool, it's not lubricating as well. It's much more viscous in the cold state. And that's not ideal for prolonging the life of your turbo. So don't just go by the water temperature gauge because the water generally warms up quite quickly. It's isolated from the circulation in the engine and the radiator until it reaches a set temperature and then it's allowed to flow around. So the water temperature can generally come up quite quickly, but you really should give it another minute or so to allow the engine 
to warm up all of the internal components and for that oil to reach its peak operating temperature. So there's something else to be wary of, and I see a lot of people doing this because they think it makes the car more economical, and that is laboring the engine or lugging the engine. So depending on where you are, it's probably got a different name for it. But the idea is that you're having a fairly high load on the engine, but at very low RPMs. And that causes all sorts of problems within the engine. Firstly, your turbo is not really cutting in. The engine's not been designed to produce power at such a low point in the RPM range. So the extra work actually creates a problem that's called low speed pre-ignition or LSPI. It's still a little bit of a mystery as to why this happens, but in their bid for making engines more and more economical, manufacturers have downsized the engines and they fitted turbochargers to them. And this problem of low speed pre-ignition is definitely on the rise. And it's very hard for an engine to control this because it's all happening at a much slower speed. So they're, they're geared up to detect knock and adjust the fuel timing and the ignition timing and everything. But inside an engine that's being lugged, you can have some pretty serious problems. Now, theories as to why this happens is um, a spot of oil gets into the cylinder, burns and ignites the mixture prematurely. And there's a few other theories out there. But you can avoid the problem completely by avoiding lugging the engine at very low RPMs. Always make sure that you choose a gear that is appropriate to the speed of the engine and the speed you're traveling at. It keeps it within the manufacturer's designed constraints and you get maximum benefit in terms of economy and performance and power. And more importantly, you're extending the life of the engine. And the final point that we're gonna look out for, and this is quite a serious one, a lot of people say it doesn't really matter, but it does no matter what you think it does make a difference so if you drive your engine really hard the turbo is spooling up the turbo is running really hot the minute you shut the engine off the oil circulation completely stops now you've got oil inside a very hot turbo now the oil is made up of layers of thick oil to thin oil it's quite complex it's like me i'm complex i've got lots of layers but with that heat, those finer layers of oil just burn off and it leaves you with sludge. And in a lot of turbo engines, you get significant problems with sludge buildup. And one of the main causes of this is just the fact that the car has been driven hard and just shut off. So your best bet, whenever you've had a spirited drive in your turbocharged engine, is to allow it a little bit of cool down time at lower RPMs just before you turn the engine off. I've seen people fit turbo timers. I think that's probably a bit extreme and that would have implications as far as the car's immobilizer goes. You're basically leaving your car running. Just taking it easy for that last little bit of your journey will allow everything within the engine to cool down and settle. So I hope this video has been useful to you. We've got lots of other tips for turbocharged engines, prolonging the life of your engine, general driving tips, and most importantly, tuning tips so you can get the best performance out of your engine. So please subscribe. If you haven't done so, make sure that you stay tuned and watch other videos on our channel. And please throw us up a like because that really helps us to get out there. And we love hearing what people think about our videos in the comments section below. So please pass on your comments, tell us what you've got. That helps us to shape future video items for this channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.